welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. The Prime Minister, who pledged to consult both businesses and unions, has held his first meeting with a major business group, talking this morning with the Business Council of Australia. His new ministers are busy getting their briefings and their feet under the desk after being sworn in yesterday. One continuing minister is now much more optimistic about his own electoral prospects. And today, Tony Abbott weighed into the debate started by the Foreign Affairs Minister Bob Carr on whether asylum seekers are not genuine refugees, but economic migrants. Joining me to discuss the day are Labor MP Michelle Rowland and Liberal MP Steve Chobo. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Good afternoon. We will begin with Mr Rudd reaching out to business, as he said he would do. I've been in regular contact with the BCA. The Prime Minister met with the BCA this morning and I've had a number of discussions with them and I'm having more discussions with them, uh, including today. We've made it clear to the government that that is an issue that needs to be dealt with and that we should be focusing at the present time on the productivity aspects of the industrial relations system. And the jury's still out on whether he has changed, Mr Rudd? <laughs> That's not for me to say. <laughs> Michelle, first to you. Does Mr Rudd have some work to do to build relations with business, particularly after the way he ha handled the mining tax when he was last in the Prime Minister's job? Linda, I think it's important to remember that governments uh, are in partnership uh, with business, particularly when it comes to things like uh, economic growth, making sure that all the indicators are there to grow uh, employment, uh, making sure that we have the right settings because we are an economy in transition, even as the Reserve Bank said today. I think it's important to note, uh, and I think it's a very positive thing, um, that the Prime Minister and the Treasurer have been very proactive in reaching out to the business community. I know that Chris Bowen, um, I come from a, a corporate background, and I know that um, Chris Bowen is very highly regarded in many sectors of the business community, particularly in his previous roles in financial services and related portfolios. And I think it's very important to ensure that that dialogue um, is set, that uh, that continues, because I think that the mutual interest of uh, business and government is to ensure that an economy grows to the benefit of all citizens. Steve, is it the right thing to be doing to focus on the productivity agenda, given that major industrial relations form from reform from either side of politics is off the agenda for a while, to focus on particularly skills and education? Well, look, I mean, the problem at the moment, Lyndall, is that you've got the government at sort of one minute to midnight attempting to repair six years of a bad relationship. Uh, Labor's approach with respect to business in Australia has been to demonise them. We've seen the advent of uh, class warfare, frankly, and you, you know, how many times do we see uh, Wayne Swan and Julie Gillard and before Julie Gillard, Kevin Rudd, uh, mercilessly attacking business in Australia and saying they were part of the problem. And in fact, you'd recall, I'm sure, that uh, when Kevin Rudd was last leader, he penned a home uh, in the monthly magazine about the death of capitalism and capitalist markets basically. So, you know, look, this renewed faith in the market, this renewed faith in Australian business, uh, this renewed uh, dialogue from Labor that in fact they need to work with Australian businesses to, uh, to ensure that there's stronger employment is welcome. But my argument would simply be that the Australian business community recognises that this is nothing other than a last minute push by Labor uh, to try to do something at one minute to midnight. Uh, we might move on now. Uh, Mr Rudd has moved into the Prime Ministerial Office. He took a call last night from the US President, Barack Obama. Uh, one, support, one, one minister who supported Julia Gillard in the leadership contest, Mark Dreyfus, is now more optimistic about his own electoral chances. Certainly what I've heard in my electorate uh, over last weekend uh, suggests to me that there's been um, a, a real tightening. Uh, you see that in a number of the published polls nationwide. And uh, I think that's right. There's a sense that uh, Labor's back in the game and we can win this election. Michelle, what sort of feedback are you getting from your electorate about the events of last week? Lyndall, I've been out and about in my community uh, over the last couple of days pretty much continuously. And uh, I think that the, uh, the shift that I have noticed is one that's gone from undecided to disengaged to engaged. And I think that that's very important uh, for the democratic process too, quite frankly, because people are directly saying to me, 
I'm pleased that I'm now engaged, I'm ready now to listen to policy arguments and I think this, is, this will very much um, be an election that is focused on the choice, the policy choices uh, between the parties and I welcome that very much. I think that it's important uh, as part of our democratic process that we actually get to debate these issues so that people can make an informed choice and I think that now that the issue of leadership um, has been put behind us, that we can actually proceed with continuing to engage with people, that they are ready uh, to listen, uh, to take up uh, the arguments and see which one they agree with, to interrogate uh, those different uh, policy positions. And I, for one, welcome that wholeheartedly. It is fair to say, though, isn't it, that engaged doesn't necessarily mean they will vote Labor, does it? Oh, absolutely right, Lyndall. This will be the fourth time that I've put myself up for any form of public office. I've never been in an election which is easy uh, and uh, there is no way that any side of politics can take any uh, position or any uh, polling for granted and as I've always said the greatest uh, useful uh, polling if you can call it that that I get is feedback from my own community and that's exactly what I've articulated to you now. And, and Steve what sort of what sort of feedback are you getting from your electorate all the talks being that that Mr Rudd's return may have the most noted improvement in the Labor vote in Queensland because it's his home state? Well, look, Lyndall, I've been, uh, like most politicians, uh, on the weekend I was out at listening posts across my electorate. Uh, the consistent feedback that I was getting from my constituents is that it's more of the same. And I mean, oh, look, I agree uh, with Michelle on this. I mean, this election is about a choice. People have a clear choice between a coalition that has, uh, you know, real positive plans for our nation's future. This is what we've got outlined in this booklet. Uh, although I have a choice between a divided and dysfunctional Labor Party. From our perspective, I think that the return of Kevin Rudd or Kevin Rudd the sequel or whatever you want to call it uh, is just going to bring back all the memories of the abject policy failures that we saw under Kevin Rudd and the single biggest policy failure that we have seen 100% thanks to Kevin Rudd was of course his decision on Australia's border protection to weaken our laws which has now seen 45,000 people arrive and 744 boats since Kevin Rudd made those changes to our laws. So we frankly Lyndall, until he does something about that, nothing's changed. We, we will come to asylum in, in a minute but Steve, the, the booklet you held up uh, doesn't have some policy areas outlined. For example, it doesn't have a detailed health policy so there is still some work ahead of you isn't there if if the electoral race does in fact tighten up does that mean that that the weight is on you to get more of the policy out there Oh, look, Linda, we will do, as every government and as every opposition has done uh, since time immemorial, we will release our full suite of policies uh, once we know what the actual costings are. I mean, never forget, Lyndall, that as an opposition, we don't have all the resources that government has. And let's also not forget that this year, for example, this year, we were meant to have a $1.4 billion surplus under Labor, but we know that, in fact, we're going to have another $18 billion deficit. And that's if you assume the budget numbers are correct. I mean, in reality, we have to wait until the pre-election fiscal outlook to actually see how bad the state of the budget is under Labor. We might finally go to the issue of asylum. While most of those who arrive by boat seeking asylum have been granted refugee status once processed, Bob Carr has raised questions about how many of those who arrive, uh, who, or, or how many of the recent arrivals are genuine refugees or economic migrants, and the opposition agrees. <laughs> Four years and he's finally woken up to the fact uh, that the vast majority of these people are not uh, fair income refugees, uh, they're economic migrants, pure and simple. Now, I can understand why people from horrible countries uh, would want to come to Australia, I can understand that, but they've got to come in the front door, not the back door. Regardless of what country it is, I think people who are coming here by boat are wanting a better life. Now, that's no surprise, but that isn't a reason that someone should get a visa. Uh, Michelle, is this the right question to be asking, whether people arriving uh, seeking asylum are, are genuine refugees or, or economic migrants? Well, firstly, Linda, I'll go to you. You know, your viewers might know, but I can't see what's on the other side of the monitor, but I understand Steve held up his slogan booklet. I think the more important question, now that we're talking about a choice between policies, is for the opposition to explain exactly how it is going to fulfil its three-word slogans. And as Bob Carr has said, quoting from others, when the evidence changes, so do I, what do you do? 
And over a period of time, we have seen from particular countries specific spikes in the amount of people claiming to seek asylum, and those, those uh, 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 claims, uh, the large number that actually aren't found um, to be eligible uh, to be granted asylum. Now, what does that say? Well, when you look at in particular, and Bob Carr has used the figures for those coming from Iran, you have to say, well, look, if they're actually not seeking asylum, then why are they seeking to come here? I think it's a very important question to ask because equally, as Bob Carr and others have said, it's important that our humanitarian intake be a genuine humanitarian intake. It's important that we have the right settings in place and the right policies in place so that we are granting asylum to people who are eligible to have it. Now, just on another issue, you know, Tony Abbott used the words, you know, horrible countries. Now, I don't know what he was trying to say there. It just shows, I think, that when he gets off three-word slogans and actually has to try and articulate something, he really is lost for words. But I think one of the important differences is, and I know that this term economic migrants has been, or economic refugees even, has been around for a while, but Labor is not the party, for example, Lindell, that has said that, oh, we should have every, uh, every person seeking asylum from a specific country, the refugee convention suspended for those people, which is what the opposition is advocating in the case of Sri Lanka. And in the case of so-called policies that work turning back boats, this is something the Navy disagrees with. The former head of the Navy has actually gone on the record saying this. Indonesia has said that they won't accept them. We actually need a regional solution. And that is what we have been seeking to do for quite some time. We need an agreement in place uh, with Indonesia on these important issues, Indonesia, but also other countries such as Iran. And I know that this is being worked out with the, um, the UNHCR at the moment as well. So Steve, we actually need these regional agreements in place, which was one of Steve, the key elements of the Houston report. Steve, isn't it the case that if, that if people are found not to be refugees, then they are in fact sent home? The government has been sending home people to Sri Lanka quite often. Uh, you know, Lyndall, uh, it's interesting, and I thought, I thought Michelle's answer really was quite telling. I mean, you know, Labor's got nowhere to go in terms of their policy on this issue, and so what we've just heard from Michelle is a negative carping attack, attack, attack on Tony Abbott. I mean, this is hardly a, a slogan book. It's hardly filled with three words slogans. This is 50 pages of documents that builds on top of an actual book that Tony Abbott's published. Now, when it comes to border protection, we know a couple of fundamentals. The Coalition has done it before, and we will do it again. Our policy to turn back the boats, which is the only thing Labor ever wants to talk about because they feel it's the only bit of traction they can get. Incidentally, that's the same policy that Labor, and in particular Kevin Rudd, the man that Michelle backed in the leadership ballot, Kevin Rudd also had a policy in 2007 initially that he was going to turn back the boats before he watered down the, 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 um, our border protection laws. Now, the consequence of Labor's policy change is indisputable. 45,000 people, 744 boats. If Labor is serious about saying they're concerned about humanitarian visas and real opportunities for humanitarian outcomes, then how could they possibly justify, Lindell, allowing people to die at sea and opening the floodgates and to have 744 boats come to this country? That's not that's, humanitarian. And that's why we'll have to leave it. We've run out of time. Steve Chobo and Michelle Rowland, okay. thank you very much.